This episode is sponsored by Four Sigmatic. I've been trying to stick to my New Year's resolutions and have loved using Four Sigmatic protein powder to recover from workouts. Its amazing flavor comes from real ingredients and no artificial flavors. Head to foursigmatic.com slash babish to get an additional 10% off their winter sale. The link is in the description. Cookie and cat, he's a pet for your tummy. Cookie and cat, he's super duper yummy. Cookie and cat, he left his family behind. Cookie and cat. Now available at Garvin's off Route 109. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at Cookie Cat from Steven Universe. Now, I am no stranger to ice cream sandwiches. Here's one left over from the basics episode I did on him. Let's see if this is still good. That was 10 months in a whole apartment ago. Eh, that's a little freezer burned. Anyway, first things first, we gotta make us a custom cookie cat cutter mold. So I got one of these make your own custom cookie cutter kits. Basically a strip of aluminum that you have to bend and crease, and arts and crafts were never my strong suit, so I don't think this is gonna go terribly well, and it came out perfect. Wow, that was surprisingly easy. And speaking of which, we're gonna start off with a super easy version, if you're just looking for a fun project to do with the kids on a rainy Saturday. I got a pint each vanilla and strawberry store-bought ice cream that I'm gonna press into a quarter sheet using some parchment paper, send it back into the freezer for at least an hour to firm back up, and for the exterior of the ice cream sandwich, I'm gonna take a page out of my own book and make it out of cake. I think that cake is a superior ice cream sandwich vehicle because it stays soft in the fridge. So I got a simple boxed chocolate cake mix here that I'm preparing according to manufacturer's instructions, but then deviating wildly from said instructions by spreading thin in a large rimmed baking sheet. Baking for about 15 minutes until the top is glossy and the cake is set. Then let it cool for just about five minutes before applying my cookie cat cutter mold shaped cutting tool, and using the back of a large piping tip to cut out the eyes. Then we're going to remove the excess cake and grab our ice cream out of the freezer. And store-bought ice cream freezes up pretty hard, so you're probably going to want to use the bottom of a large saucepan to press down evenly and get your cookie cat cutter through the scream. Then we're going to break off the excess scream. Don't throw it away or anything, it's still perfectly edible. You can use it to make a weird shaped sundae. Then on some parchment paper, we're going to plop down one of our cake pieces, top that with our ice cream cutout, and one more cake piece. We're throwing that back in the freezer for a couple hours, both to bind the cake to the ice cream and to firm up the cake. And there you have it, a quick and easy cookie cat you can knock out as a fun project with the kids or with your inner kid. Per Steven's instructions, we're starting with the ears. And it's certainly good, it's chocolate cake and ice cream, but it's still more of a cake cat. To make the genuine article, we're gonna start by making our own no-churn ice cream. We're combining one cup of cold, heavy cream, half a can of sweetened condensed milk, about seven ounces, a half teaspoon of kosher salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and our secret weapon, about two ounces of clotted cream. This stuff's pretty widely available in jars at the supermarket, but an acceptable substitute is one ounce of mascarpone cheese diluted with two ounces of heavy cream. This is going to crank up the fat content of our ice cream, which is going to help keep it soft in the freezer. Using a hand mixer, we are beating this stuff to stiff peaks. So basically what we're making here is kind of like an enriched whipped cream, which when frozen will make for a smooth, creamy, and most importantly, biteable ice cream. We're spreading that out in half our sheet pan, and then it's time to make our strawberry ice cream, for which we're going to need some strawberries, which we can opt roast to amplify their strawberry e flavor. You definitely don't have to play small cut side down. Why'd you do that, Andy? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, we're roasting these at 350 for about 25 minutes, after which time they'll look very much the same, but they'll be soft and pokeable, and they will have a deeper, more jam-like flavor. So we're gonna let these cool off for a few minutes before dumping them into a food processor, pureeing them into a puree, and straining said puree through a fine mesh sieve. Now, our puree is gonna obviously add a lot of liquid to our ice cream, so we need to alter the formula a little bit. This time, six ounces of heavy cream, six ounces of sweetened condensed milk, three ounces of clotted cream or clotted cream substitute, half teaspoon of kosher salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Beat this to stiff peaks, and then we're going to fold in our strawberry puree in an effort not to deflate all the nice air that we've whipped into our ice cream base. Once you got that all folded in there, you can optionally add some pink food coloring, which I definitely should have done. Otherwise, you can just pour it in next to your vanilla on the sheet tray, smooth it out using an offset spatula. That's kind of satisfying looking. And just to make sure it's extra flat, top it with some parchment paper and press it down lightly with another rim quarter sheet. Then we're going to wrap this guy thoroughly in plastic wrap. 
Don't want any freezer burn going on? And stick them in the freezer for at least four hours. Plenty of time to make the cookies for our cookie cat. Now, Kendall and I ended up making seven different batches of cookie here because we really wanted to nail the look and the texture. It had to be smooth, had to have clean edges, had to not fall apart when you tried to pick it up, and we wanted it to have a slight cookie crunch, and I think we finally nailed it. Into the bowl of a stand mixer goes 75 grams of softened butter, 100 grams of granulated sugar, 50 grams of light brown sugar, and a half teaspoon each baking soda and salt. And we're going to cream everybody together on high speed until it is light and fluffy. While that's a creaming, we are sifting together 80 grams of high quality cocoa powder with 160 grams of all-purpose flour. Adding a third of that mixture to the stand mixer on low speed, combining one teaspoon of vanilla with 110 milliliters of whole milk, which likewise we're going to add a third of to the mixer, allow it to completely incorporate, before adding a third of the dry, a third of the wet, repeating until everything is added and incorporated, and we have a thick dough resembling Play-Doh, which we're going to place between two sheets of parchment paper and roll out to an even thickness, about four millimeters thick, peeling off the top layer of parchment paper so that we can cut out our shapes. It took us several batches to realize that we should cut the cookies out first to prevent cracked and or messy edges. So we're going to cut out our cookie cats, cut out their eyes, that sounds wrong, and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for seven to ten minutes until they look dry on the top. Allow those to cool completely and then it's pretty much the same assembly as last time. We're going to peel the parchment paper off our homemade no-churn ice cream, remove it from the tray and then use our mold and a heavy bottom saucepan to cut out two pieces of ice cream filling that we're going to place betwixt our cookies. I made mine kind of gigantic so this recipe is only going to yield two cookie cats, but likewise once we get them assembled we're going to place them in the freezer for at least two hours before consuming immediately or wrapping in plastic wrap for longer term storage. And there you have it, cookie cat as I always imagined him. A pet for your tummy that's super duper yummy that left his uh, family behind. The ice cream is super soft and bite throughable and despite being frozen solid the cookie yields as well despite having a cookie like crunch. And Stephen is correct to start with the ears. I don't think there's any other way to feasibly eat this thing besides, I don't know, maybe cutting it in half and sharing it because it's the size of a softball. Thank you again to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring this episode. I love their plant-based protein. It's made from functional mushrooms and real vanilla with absolutely no fillers. This means it's also 100% grain-free. You can even bake with it. I added a couple scoops to my favorite chocolate waffle recipe, which I sandwiched together with some whipped cream to make protein ice cream sandwiches. Four Sigmatic is having their winter sale right now, up to 50% off products like the plant-based protein, plus you can get an exclusive additional 10% off all sale products. Head to foursigmatic.com babish to check it out. The link is in the video description.